G'day everyone. Welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me. Today, I'm talking about Australian terrestrial ecosystem engineers. Can you guess what they are? Ecosystem engineers are animals that have an impact on the environment and they bring change about that. There's a whole range of ways that animals and wildlife can be ecosystem engineers. And one example is dingoes. They hunt large prey like emus and kangaroos. By hunting that large prey, and the large prey are herbivores, they eat uh, parts of the environment like grasses, low bushes, fruiting trees. By dingoes hunting herbivores, it means there's less pressure on the environment because there's less herbivores. And that's dingoes engineering a response. But the ones that I want to talk to you about are small and brown, and don't you dare call them rats. But they are betongs and potteroos and bandicoots. They are all small marsupial terrestrial ecosystem engineers. Let's take a look at the species and break each down. Now we have a rufous betong. It's a small macropod, a small kangaroo. And it basically feeds and forages about this high off the ground. And it eats fresh shoots of bushes, little fruiting plants, grasses, in that mid-level. Now, let's have a look at a bandicoot. A bandicoot is omnivorous, so it'll eat insects or plant material. Now, in doing so, it's at ground level, and it does little holes in the ground to search for grubs or worms. Now, let's go to the potteroo. The potteroo digs for mushrooms and truffles and fungi. Now, what do the three of them have in common? They each play a role towards the environment. Now let's break them down again. The potteroo is an ecosystem engineer because it digs, and it digs an incredible amount of dirt in a year. And there's a few things that happen. When it digs, it turns over the vegetation, so the leaves that have fallen onto the ground. It turns over that vegetation and, and debris. And in doing that, it helps with decomposition, which is the leaves and bark breaking down to become dirt. And we had a really bad fire season this year in Australia, and you think, where you have a potteroo that digs through the ground all the time and helps turning leaves and bark and debris to dirt, it reduces the fire load. So a potteroo can actually help to have less intensity fires. But that's not where it ends. When it digs, it turns over the dirt. And when the trees and plants have dropped their seeds onto the ground, the seed's sitting there, waiting to germinate, but it needs to be buried. And the potteroo buries it, so it disperses seeds. And the last thing it does is it aerates the soil. It puts oxygen down through the root systems of trees and plants, and that's a great thing. Now, if we jump to the bandicoot, it's similar. It hunts grubs and bugs. And in doing so, it means those grubs and bugs aren't eating the roots of the trees. And it also disperses seeds, and it also reduces fire load, and it also aerates the soil. Now, if you come to uh, the bedong, the bedong is a little different in that it doesn't dig, and it doesn't turn over the dirt. But as it moves, it actually eats little bits of debris and vegetation and grasses, and it keeps the, the, the forest floor open. Otherwise, it would be so thick, and if you didn't have a bed on to thin it out, you wouldn't have room for a potteroo or a bandicoot to be able to dig their food up. So all three of those species, and like the dingoes that I mentioned, by doing what they do in the environment, they benefit the broader ecology, the big environment. And if you don't have them there, that's not happening. What happens if we don't have these species doing their role in the environment. I want to give you two examples. I'm going to pick our beautiful little potteroo and the dingo. Now, where you have dingoes, they control herbivore numbers, like kangaroos and emus. If you don't have the dingo controlling them, what do you think happens? The kangaroo and emus continue to breed, and their damage to the environment gets out of control. And so where you had a lush grassland, it's now down like a golf course. They've stripped all the vegetation away. So by having dingoes hunting herbivores, you keep in balance their effect on the environment. Now, if we come to a little potteroo, a potteroo turns over so much dirt every year. If we don't have the potteroo, who's oxygenating the soil? Who's planting the seeds that are sitting on the surface? Who's helping to turn the leaves and the bark into dirt so we don't have such intense wildfires? We must have these species in our environment as a part of the bigger picture. Australian wildlife is sometimes overlooked. We know so much about whales or gorillas or tigers or elephants or rhinos, and that's important too. But we don't know enough about potteroos or bandicoots or bedongs. Have you ever met one? Have you ever seen one? 
we really need to focus on our Australian wildlife. It is so unique. And if I told you that 40 species, Australian species, have gone extinct in the last 100 or so years, and remember, extinction is permanent, we won't see them again. They're gone. Who's doing their role? How are you helping to make sure that they're out there? We need to pay interest. And I want you to research. I want you to learn about obscure little Australian marsupials, little Australian reptiles, little Australian birds. By you learning about them, my hope is that you grow up to protect them. Homework for today, I want you to find an example that I haven't mentioned. I don't mind whether they're engineers in the ocean. I don't mind whether they're engineers in the canopy of the forests or terrestrial engineers like the ones I mentioned. But please, find an example of two, do a drawing if you like, and you tell me other ecosystem engineers that you've found. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you again. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Uh, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. But this is what I do, connecting people with nature and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.